Good morning and welcome as we gather for worship today, uh, wherever we're gathering. I thank you for tuning in and being a part of worship. A couple of things I wanted to point out as we begin our time of worship today. Uh, we have had to step back uh, and begin to worship virtually. Many of you have had to worship virtually because of uh, health concerns, uh, other concerns about gathering in a large community. Um, so you have been used to this, at least to some degree, but many of us have been used to gathering in person. Um, and let me just say that this really stinks, not being able to gather in person. Um, but what a blessing it is to be able to still connect in the different ways that we're able to connect this morning. A huge, huge thank you to Fly and Brian as he broadcasts this on Oldies 101 WIOE. And a huge, huge thank you to Dan and Mandy Ferguson for providing some uh, coverage for us through Facebook, YouTube, and our website. So as we begin worship this morning, a couple of things I wanted to make you aware of. We'll continue virtually worshiping uh, for the time being. We'll try to get word out to you and communicate to you as often as we can to keep you up to date on where we are. I assume that we're going to continue to do this probably through the end of the year, but we will keep you posted on when we're able to gather back together in person eventually. A couple of things going on in the church I want to make you aware of. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you to the many who provided board games, cards, different types of games for the younger elementary aged kids. Uh, many of you dropped those off this week at our office uh, to provide for schools here in our community. So a huge thank you if you were a part of donating some of those uh, games and cards. If you haven't had a chance to do that, uh, you can still do that. You can bring your card cards or your games for smaller elementary school children by the church here during office hours, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 4.30. I also wanted to mention as we uh, continue through this season, getting close to Advent, it's hard to believe that Advent will begin um, in just a couple of weeks. Um, and what we're going to do during the, the months, the month of Advent is we're going to encourage you to plug in and connect, not only here in worship virtually, but you're going to have the opportunity to plug in and connect through a small group study, uh, studying the book by Adam Hamilton, Incarnation. And uh, we'll get information out to you so that you're aware of how you can plug into that. Um, but I encourage you to do that, especially during this time of distancing. It's a great way to be able to connect with others, to study God's word, and to continue to grow in our walk with Jesus. Also during this season, we're going to provide a children's study through uh, David Himes' ministry here. He's been giving us um, an opportunity to connect with our younger families, with children, through a Zoom uh, video that, that children and families can connect with um, and continue to grow spiritually. And that will continue through the Advent season with this special Advent study. So if you have young children um, and would like to be a part of that, again, we will get information to you so that you're aware of that. One of the things that we're going to do in the future weeks is we're going to provide you the opportunity to, to log into our, or to join in on our uh, church website and be able to see a worship folder with all of the different activities that are going to be taking place. We'll also be having a newsletter coming out in the near future that will give you some information on ways you can be a part of, of the ministry of the church. I think that's all for right now. As we gather for worship this morning, I want to invite you to join me in prayer. God, thank you for your presence that brings us hope, that brings us joy, that brings us strength and encouragement. God, that breathes new life into us from moment to moment. Thank you, God, for gathering us in the different ways that we're gathered to worship you today. And God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon each one that's a part of this time of worship, that we may know your very presence as we walk with you in worship today. In Jesus' name, amen. of faith. 
As we enter this place of worship today, we bring our joys and sorrows, our hopes and disappointments, our prayers, songs, and gifts. As we enter this place of worship today, may we also bring our very selves, all that we are, and lay them before you an act of worship. As we enter this place of worship today, May the presence of God further awaken us to the call on our lives to share blessings with others. Come, let us worship God, the source of every good and perfect gift. Good morning. It's great to be with you, even if it is virtual. I brought a friend today, so if you're watching, you can see her. Her name is Jasper. She is our two-year-old lab puppy, and she has a brother that she's looking for. He's at home. His name is Bruno. But today we're talking about being good stewards, and I thought, what better way to talk about that than how we take care of our pets? Stewardship means taking care of Oh, she's going to talk too. (laughs) So when we take care of our pets, we do all kinds of things. We feed them. We give them water. We pet them. We are able to take them for walks and runs and play with them. And our 200-pound dogs even sleep with us. So (laughs) it's a full bed. Um, But we love our pets, so we take good care of them. We are good stewards of them. And let's think of some other things that we take care of. In our families, we take care of each other. We eat together, we play together, we learn together, we grow together. We are good stewards of our friends. We take care of them. We listen to them, we talk to them, we play with them, we learn from them, and we grow together. And our church family, we are good stewards of our church family. And sometimes being good stewards can be hard, right? So like right now, we are meeting virtually, and that's really difficult. But to be the best stewards of our church family, to take care of our church family, we're staying home so that we can make sure everybody is healthy and safe. When we wear masks, it's the same story. We want to be good stewards of our community members, our friends in our town and in our state and in our country. So it's really important to be caring and good stewards of all of those people and pets around us. So let's pray about that. Lord, thank you so much for just showing us what it means to be a good steward. You constantly take care of us by providing love and support. We pray that we would always have the courage and willingness and ability to go out and be good stewards of all the people and animals and the world around us. Help us to do that every day. Amen. Thank you, Mandy Bailey, for that children's message. Thank you, Jazz, for supporting us with the children's message this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. As we do that this morning, we'll start with a moment of silence. I will lift up some prayers, and then I'll invite you to join me as we lift up the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray.
We are grateful during this strange season that we find ourselves in as we journey through this year that many of us just want to go away. Lord, thank you that you walk with us. Thank you, God, for the ways that you are showing yourself strong, the ways that you are blessing us, the ways that you're drawing us close to one another, close to you. And God, the ways that you're calling us to reach out with love and with compassion, with hope to those around us. God, thank you that your work never ends. Lord, that no matter what our circumstances, God, you are still about the business of making your presence known, furthering your kingdom, and sharing love. God, as we gather as we are today, wherever we are today, God, we ask that you would continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit and guide us. Show us the ways, God, that you're calling us to reach out with hope and compassion, with the good news of Jesus to those around us. And God, the ways you're calling us to share that love and that hope with those around us. God, this morning we're grateful for this community, for the many, many people who serve faithfully here in our community. God, we know that our healthcare workers are overwhelmed right now. God, those in the, in the business of taking care of people are overwhelmed. God, we ask that you would pour out your strength, pour out your healing, pour out your wisdom upon those, Lord, who are taking care of our community right now. God, bless and guide them in the important work that they do. God, thank you for our teachers, for our, our folks that are working in the schools that are trying to help our children learn and, Lord, are trying to keep everybody safe so that they can continue to learn in person. Lord, we pray that you would guide the decisions that are being made, that you would be with those in leadership in our schools and be with our teachers and our students. Watch over them, keep them safe. God, our businesses and the communities that we live, Lord, they're hurting. And God, we ask that you would bring hope and encouragement to these businesses, Lord, that you would give creativity, ways to be able to continue. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would bless and guide those that are in business around our communities today. God, we also pray for those in leadership, Lord, here locally in our communities, in our states, Lord, also in our nation, and leaders around the world. God, give wisdom and guidance. I pray for open hearts, open minds of our leaders to be able to listen to one another, to be able to listen to those in authority who know and have wisdom, and God, to be able to, to listen for your leading. And I pray, God, that you would guide our leaders in very important decisions that are being made from moment to moment. And God, we pray for our nation. Lord, we pray that that peace, which passes all understanding, God, that we so depend on from day to day as followers of Jesus would fill this land. And God, that you would speak peace into the hearts and the minds and the spirits of those around our nation today. God, where there's division, Lord, bring hope, bring unity, bring peace. And God, we pray that you would continue to have your hand upon this nation as we continue through this season of uncertainty. God, we're grateful for those that we're close to today. We thank you, Lord, for our loved ones and Lord, we ask that you would be with those that we are close to today. God, first of all, that they would know your incredible love for them. God, that you would awaken them more and more to the great love that you have for them. And God, for those that are hurting today, that you would bring healing and strength and encouragement to them. We pray for family members here in this church, Lord, that are, that are hurting today, that need your touch. We pray for Anne, for Kevin and Charlotte, for Peter and Bill, for Edie, for John, for Ellie, for Teresa, for Brian, for Lois, and Lord, all of those that are walking a journey of difficult times right now, God, that they would know the powerful healing presence of Jesus in their lives. And God, this morning as we worship in the way that we're worshiping as a church, Lord, thank you that you meet us right here. God, that you draw us close to you, that we can walk with you from moment to moment. And God, as we join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, God, thank you that we join a host of others who are gathered in worship in different ways around our world, lifting up this very prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading is from Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Then he left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole and in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called to them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops that you did not plant and gathering crops you did not cultivate. I am afraid I will lose, would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit the money in the bank? At least I would have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ouch, that's a tough way to end a scripture reading, isn't it? <laughs> God, thank you for your holy word. Lord, yes, you speak to us in powerful ways through Scripture. Lord, I pray that our ears, our hearts, our minds, our eyes would be open to what you would have us know. And God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing in your sight, our great rock and redeemer. Amen. I want to say thank you to Sally Newell. Sally was our liturgist today, and I appreciate her helping us out in worship today. Also to Music Brian, Brian Brockla and Ann Baker that are singing with us today, and also our organist, Richard Dick, for playing uh, and being a part of this worship service today. Dave Bailey, thank you. Dave is on the soundboard today. So we uh, enter a season of Advent, this time of the year at the end of the year. It also is a season where we're thinking ahead of what's coming up in the next year. And of course, being in the midst of a pandemic, it's hard to even begin to make concrete plans for what's going to happen starting January 1st, 2021. There's some plans we can make, some things that we can kind of uh, make plans for, but there's an awful lot that we're just still uncertain about. Uncertain about as individuals, um, uncertain about as a church. Um, but one of the things that we know going into a new year, one of the things we have to plan for um, as a church is budget. And so this time of the year, we're thinking stewardship. Um, and before you say, oh man, and before you turn off your radio or turn off, turn off the computer, hang on a second. Because just because we focus on stewardship for a couple of weeks during the fall in preparation for the coming year, this life of stewardship is something that God calls us to every single day 
there's a scripture that could apply to stewardship that we could talk about every single day of the year. And Jesus often talked about stewardship. And stewardship is a whole lot more than just our money. Um, and so before you turn your, your television off or your, your radio off or your computer off thinking they're going to ask for money, um, this is not a money ask. This is much, much more than a money ask. This is an entire life ask. Um, and Jesus often put that ask out as he journeyed on this earth, as he, as he shared these stories. And we looked at one in particular today, um, a story of talents. Um, Jesus often asked people to not give just this part of me or that part of me, but he asked that we would give our entire selves to him. So this, this issue of stewardship, and those of you that are part of the church family, um, and maybe you've given to the church before, um, you should have received in the mail an envelope with a letter from me, as well as an estimate of giving card for the coming year. Um, what I want to ask you to do, if you receive that in the mail, what I want to ask you to do is pray. Say, God, what do you want me to do? Um, some of us are automatic tithers. We look at our income and we take 10%. And there it is. Some of us have a set amount that we think about every year. Nothing wrong with that. But what I want to ask you to do is to just pray and say, God, this coming year, we have no idea what to expect. There's a lot of uncertainty. And for some of us, there's fear. But God, what would you have me do? What would you have me give? And I just want to encourage you to do that before you fill that form out. And so many of you have been faithful in filling those forms out and sending those to us. So many of you have been faithful in giving this year. This year has been so incredibly weird with all of the ups and downs of what's happening in our world. So many of you have been faithfully, faithfully giving of your time, your talents, your gifts, and your witness. And those are hugely important. All of that comprises what we call stewardship. So today's scripture, Jesus' teaching, again, we've walked through Matthew 25 the last couple of weeks, and we're looking at this particular passage from Matthew 25, where he shares another parable, another story. Last week we heard the story of the ten bridesmaids, or the ten virgins, whose oil and their lamps were so important in lighting the way for the groom at that time when the groom is called out. And no one knew the time, no one knew the hour, and the important message that Jesus shared with his disciples and those that were listening was, we have to be ready. And what does being ready entail? Not just having oil in our lamps as these bridesmaids, but it entails having our lives open to the work of God, laying our lives down before God, being filled with the very presence of God, and going when God calls us to go, prepared, filled with his presence to respond. And so we look at a story today that follows the other story about the bridesmaids. We look at the story of the talents. And, and if you know anything about scripture, about the uh, monetary value, talents were a very, very high-priced silver coin that was used in the Roman Empire at the time. And very few, few people actually had access to a talent. It was just something that was way beyond what most people could even afford to carry on their person, let alone even have. Um, many of us are familiar with the widow's mite. Um, that's just like a penny, um, equivalent to what would be considered a penny. It's not much. Well, the talent was a lot. In fact, they describe it as being like 6,000 days wages of, would be one talent. And so as this uh, story unfolds, as Jesus shares the story of, of this man who went on a long journey, again, we hear that that. that Understanding that, that there's a, a distance of time that someone's going to be away, and there's going to be waiting, and there's going to be anticipation, and there's going to be uncertainty about when the master will return. And in this story, Jesus says he leaves talents to these servants. Now, when we think about this, it's kind of unusual that, that a master would leave talents to a servant, especially such value. But here in this story, it's incredible. Hear the heartbeat of God in this story. As he shares this story with the people that are there, keep in mind he was battling with the religious leaders. The religious leaders who were all about the appearance, um, about putting forth this image, um, about holding people kind of captive in a certain way of being so that they would have the power and the people would have to follow along. And he was, oh, Jesus was so frustrated with the religious leaders. He respected them, he honored them, he valued them as persons, but he was so incredibly frustrated with the way that they were treating people 
and the way that they were doing things. And so again, this story comes kind of in the midst of that, following on the heels of his conversation with the religious leaders. As he shares this story, hear this, these servants, and sometimes we think of servant master, it's like servants are nothing, masters are everything. That could be farther from the truth. As Jesus shares this story, this master leaves talents in the possession of these servants, these incredibly valuable coins. And I can imagine as the people heard that, they were like, wow, that's a trusting master to leave that kind of money with his servants. And in this story, we hear the heartbeat of God that God puts in our midst incredible resources that are incredibly valuable. And part of the problem is that we don't see the value sometimes in the resources that God gives us. Sometimes we do, and we say, God, thank you, and we go out and we use those resources, but oftentimes we're not even aware of it. And as I look at this story and I see these two servants who take the five and the two talents and they invest it and they bring a, a return on their investment, my attention focuses on the master, the servant who had the one talent. And you know, for, for years and years, as I read this scripture and I saw what happened with this one talent person and how they took that talent and they took that talent out of fear, dug a hole and buried it. Boy, I can identify with that. And maybe, maybe you can too. Maybe you can identify with, first of all, sort of, sort of that attitude of, God, you've given me so much and I know you demand so much and you want me to do with what you've given to me so much. And I just, it, it's just too much of a burden. And so there's something inside of us that thinks, you know what, I'm just, I'm just gonna kinda keep this here, keep it sort of secure so that, so that when I'm called on, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And it, it's not like it's not a value. I mean, one talent was a lot of money. But where's my heart? And again, Jesus goes to the heart of the matter. Religious leaders had everything to do with the image, the appearance. Jesus just plowed right through to the heart of the matter when he talked about these servants. And God's heart for us is that first of all, we would know the master. You see, the master already knew the servants, right? I love how this particular translation, when you read through this translation, it's the New Living Translation, this particular translation says that the master gave out the talents in proportion to what he knew that these servants could handle. You may have read through that. I've read through that, that scripture passage many times before, read over that, but it just hasn't hit me like that. God knows. And you know why God, you know why the master knows? Because he knows us better than anyone. God knows exactly what we are able to work with. Now, there's a popular saying that oftentimes gets attributed to Scripture, which it is not, that God will not ever give us more than we can handle. I'm sure you've heard that. And oftentimes, I bet there's a lot of Google searches on that to see if it's a Scripture. And it sounds really cool. It sounds like a Scripture. God will never give me more than I can handle. The opposite is true. God oftentimes gives us so much more than we can handle, or at least we perceive that we can handle. Because when it's something much more than we even think we can handle, as God does that work through us, you know what, we can't point to ourselves, I can't point to myself and say, wow, look what I did, isn't that cool? It's a reminder that God is able to do abundantly more than we can ever hope, ask, or imagine, as Paul prays in one of his epistles. God gives us more than we can handle oftentimes to shine forth this truth that God can do the amazing things in us and through us in spite of ourselves. God knew, or the master knew this servant so well. He knew the five-talent servant. He knew the two-talent servant. He knew the one-talent servant. And his anticipation, expectation for these servants was that they would take those gifts that God, that the master had given to them and go out there and use them and invest them. So many of us can identify with the one talent servant who looks at that coin or whatever it is in our lives that we have 
And for some of us, maybe it wasn't given to us. For some of us, maybe we have worked our entire lives to get to this place. And we look at that one talent. Whatever that one talent is, it could be a a gift that we have, a talent that we have, it could be resources that we have. And we think, oh my goodness, I have got to protect this. We may even say, okay, God, I know that you provided that. Everything that I am, everything I have is a gift from you. I might have worked and worked and worked to get to where I am, to be able to do what I do or to have what I have, but God, ultimately everything's a gift from you. Thank you, God, for that gift. God knows what we can deal with. And God places in our lives the gifts, the resources, the talents that we need, not just for ourselves, Yes, for ourselves, for our families, but not just for us. But just as those bridesmaids had to have oil in their lamps to be able to light the way for the bridegroom, God gives us talents, he gives us gifts, he gives us resources so that our lives can shine forth the very presence of God and be a blessing to those around us. See, Israel's problem wasn't that they didn't know about God, they knew about God. They knew about God really, really well. They could recite everything that they knew about God up one side, down the other. They knew about God. Those servants knew about their master. But their perception was so different. Do you hear that in the story? The five and the two, they went out immediately and put it to work. The one, I was afraid. And maybe some of you are afraid. Maybe some of us are afraid. God gives us those gifts those resources, those blessings, whether we know it or not, God gives those to us as a trust. He says, take this. Let it be a blessing to you, but trust that I can use this to expand the kingdom. Jesus starts these parables by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like It's like a a man who's gone on a long journey. He's going to be gone who knows how long. When will he come back? I don't know. How long do I have to wait? I don't know. What do I do in the meantime? I don't know. But one thing I do know is that the master loves us. And the master loves us places that trust in our hands. Not to go out and say, here, do the best you can. But in relationship with the master, master knows us. My job is to know the master. And I fail. Paul, in his letters, he says, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ in his, in his death and in his resurrection. I want to experience the sufferings that he experiences. I want to be fully his one talent, I'm holding on to it because I'm afraid. So if you are afraid, if you're holding on to that talent, fearful of what might happen to you, what might happen to the talent, what might happen as a result, my prayer for you is that your hands will open by the grace of God, not because you've got it in and of you to do that, but by the grace of God that your hand will open and your heart will say, Master, I want to know you. Because when I know you, I really know who you are. I know your love for me and your heart for me. A heart of love, compassion, and anticipation that I will go and that I will be the person you have called me to be. Every single one of us has a call in our lives. Whatever that call is, every single one of us has a call in our lives to live out faith and to live out this relationship with the master. So during this season uh, of stewardship, it's not a two-week thing. It's a lifelong thing a lifelong journey of understanding who we are in Christ, in our relationship with God, a lifelong journey of understanding who the master is, 
a lifelong journey of understanding what it is to say, my life is yours. Lifelong journey of making mistakes, getting back up, saying, God, here I am. That's the cool thing about the master. This story ends on a really sour note, doesn't it? <laughs> Yikes. And just as the story of the bridesmaids comes to an end, every story comes to an end. It's the way stories are. And we all want a happy ending, don't we? We want everybody lived happily ever after. And in this particular story, we have two whose story ended that way. Because the master knew them, but they also knew the master. So whatever your story is today, God gives us the opportunity not to make things happen, but to respond. It's what he calls for. You respond to someone who shows you love. That's what God wants. And the way we can respond, the best way we can respond to our creator, our master, is to say, Lord, here I am. Have your way. Take my life and let it be fully yours. God, thank you. Thank you for your patience with us. Lord, as we wait, as we worship, Lord, let us lay our lives down in surrender. God, help us to know you. Let that be our prayer, as it was Paul's prayer. I want to know Christ. I want to know you, Lord. Fill us with your presence. And that as we hear your heartbeat, as we know you, Lord, open our hands that hold so tightly to our talents and offer back to you it comes from you originally offer back to you Lord all that we are take our lives and let them be consecrated Lord to thee in Jesus name Amen
you so much for being a part of worship with us this morning. Now go and make the most of every opportunity that God gives you, knowing that you do not go alone. That the very presence of God, the Master, is with you every step. God bless you. Thank you.